So I called up one of the wealthiest cattle ranches in Montana, and I asked him one simple question. What's the one feed ingredient you'd choose if you could only use one? He went silent for like 10 seconds. Then he said, wheat, but don't tell anyone I told you that. That's weird, right? Corn gets all the attention, but elite ranchers are quietly using wheat to fatten their cattle faster and cheaper. I spent the last two weeks investigating why this is such a guarded secret in the beef cattle industry. What I found out is insane. There's a specific way they're processing wheat that changes everything about weight gain and marbling. Most ranchers are doing it completely wrong and losing thousands of dollars. I'm about to expose the exact feeding protocol that separates the top 5% from everyone else, but first, you need to understand why wheat is so controversial. Here's the thing nobody talks about. Wheat has about 90% the energy value of corn, but here's where it gets interesting. It costs anywhere from 15 to 30% less depending on your region and the season. Think about that for a second. You're getting nearly the same bang for way fewer bucks. But that's not even the best part. Wheat has a higher protein content than corn, usually around 13 to 15% compared to corn's 8 to 9%. This means your cattle are getting more complete nutrition in every bite. And the worst part is, almost nobody knows this. Now, I know what you're thinking. If wheat is so good, why isn't everyone using it? Well, here's where the trap lies. Wheat contains something called non-starch polysaccharides, especially in the hull, and these can cause serious digestive issues if you don't prepare it correctly. I've seen ranchers dump whole wheat into their feed bunks and wonder why their cattle aren't gaining weight, why they're bloated, why feed conversion rates are terrible. The secret isn't just using wheat, it's how you process it. Let me break this down for you, because this is where fortunes are made or lost. The top ranchers are doing one of three things with their wheat. They're either rolling it, grinding it coarsely, or steam flaking it. And each method has a specific purpose depending on your operation size and your goals. Stay with me here because I'm about to reveal which method gives you the absolute best return on investment. Rolling wheat breaks up the kernel just enough to increase digestibility without turning it into powder. This is perfect for smaller operations, ranchers with 50 to 200 head. It's cost-effective, you don't need expensive equipment, and it dramatically improves starch availability. But here's the catch. You need to use it within 72 hours of rolling, or it starts oxidizing and losing nutritional value. Most ranchers don't know this, and they're feeding stale rolled wheat that's worth half of what they paid for. Coarse grinding is the middle ground. It works well for medium-sized operations, and it gives you about 5 to 7 more days of shelf life compared to rolling. The particle size matters tremendously here. You want it ground to about 0.2 to 0.4 inches in diameter. Too fine and you risk acidosis. Too coarse and cattle can't digest it properly. Have you experienced bloat in your herd after changing feed? This might be why. Now, steam flaking, this is what the big players use. This is the Montana rancher's actual secret. Steam flaking gelatinizes the starch in wheat, making it up to 95% digestible compared to only 70 to 75% for whole wheat. The cattle absorb more energy, gain weight faster, and you see better marbling. But the equipment is expensive. We're talking tens of thousands of dollars. However, if you're running 500 head or more, the math works out beautifully. You'll recover that investment in one to two finishing cycles. But here's something crucial that separates amateur ranchers from professionals. You never, ever feed wheat as 100% of the grain ration. Never. I don't care what anyone tells you. The magic ratio is between 30 and 50% wheat, with the rest being corn, barley, or other grains. Why? Because wheat is highly fermentable. It breaks down fast in the rumen, and if you overload it, you create an acidic environment that crashes your cattle's digestive system. I've seen herds go off feed for weeks because someone thought more wheat meant more gain. It doesn't work that way. Let me give you a real example. A rancher in Nebraska I spoke with switched from straight corn to a 40% wheat blend. He was skeptical at first, thought it sounded too good to be true. Within 90 days, his average daily gain went from 2.8 pounds to 3.3 pounds per head. His feed costs dropped by 18%. That's an extra half pound per day per animal. 
multiply that across 200 head over a 120-day finishing period, and you're looking at an additional 12,000 pounds of sellable beef. At current market rates, that's serious money. And here's what most people get wrong about timing. Wheat works best in the finishing phase, the last 90 to 120 days before slaughter. This is when you want maximum energy density and rapid weight gain. Using wheat earlier in the backgrounding phase can work, but you won't see the dramatic results. The cattle's metabolic systems are primed for high energy feed during finishing, and that's when wheat truly shines. You also need to watch moisture content. Wheat should be stored at 14% moisture or less, any higher and you risk mold, especially aspergillus and fusarium, which produce mycotoxins that can devastate your herd. I'm talking liver damage, immune suppression, and even death in severe cases. Always, always test your wheat before buying in bulk. Spend the 50 bucks on a moisture meter, it'll save you thousands. Here's another cliffhanger for you. There's a specific type of wheat that outperforms all others for cattle fattening, and it's not what you'd expect. Hard red winter wheat has higher protein and better starch content than soft white wheat. But, and this is critical, if you can get soft white wheat at a steep discount, the difference in performance doesn't justify paying a premium for hard red. Run the numbers for your specific situation. Sometimes the cheaper option wins. Now let's talk about the adaptation period, because this is where I see ranchers sabotage themselves. You cannot just switch your cattle from a corn-based diet to a wheat blend overnight. Their rumens need time to adjust. You need a 14 to 21 day transition period, gradually increasing the wheat percentage while decreasing the previous grain. Start at 10% wheat, then move to 20, then 30, until you hit your target ratio. Rush this and you'll have sick cattle and expensive vet bills. One more thing that elite ranchers do, they add a buffer to their wheat-based rations. Sodium bicarbonate at about 0.75 to 1% of the total dry matter helps neutralize the acid production from wheat fermentation. It's cheap insurance against acidosis and keeps cattle on feed consistently. Consistent intake equals consistent gains. So what's the bottom line here? Wheat is an incredibly powerful tool for fattening cattle, but only if you understand the science and apply it correctly. Process it right, blend it properly, transition gradually, and monitor your herd closely. Do this and you'll see faster gains, lower costs, and better quality beef. Ignore these principles and you'll waste money and time. If you've learned something valuable today, do me a favor. Subscribe to Biggest Bulls and Cow right now. We're building a community of serious ranchers who want real information, not fluff. Drop a comment below and tell me, are you currently using wheat in your operation? What results have you seen? Let's learn from each other and share this video with another rancher who needs to hear this because knowledge like this shouldn't stay hidden. We rise together in this industry. Hit that subscribe button and I'll see you in the next one where we're diving into the mineral supplementation mistakes that are costing you money every single day. Don't miss it.